This video will give you an overview of the Diploma in Financial Studies exams. So you've already completed Unit 1 and Unit 2 and obtained your Certificate in Financial Studies. So now you're on to the Diploma. Now for the Diploma, you would study Unit 3, Sustainability of an Individual's Finances and you'll sit a Multiple Choice exam, Part A and Part B, a written exam in January. You will also have the Reset Opportunity in March for Unit 3 which you need to discuss with your teacher. Then you will study Unit 4, Sustainability of the Financial Services System. Part A is the multiple choice exam, Part B is the written exam, and you'll sit that in late April, early May. And again, you'll have the recent opportunity in June. As you know, with resets, the highest grade counts. Part A is a multiple choice exam. It is for one hour. There are 35 marks available. You need to answer all questions. As you know, it's an e-test, so you'll sit that in a computer room and the results of the assessment will be given to you straight after you finish. If you need some more practice on the multiple choice, then do check out the links in the description box. Let's take a look at the grade boundaries. These are the grade boundaries for your multiple choice. These are fixed. So as you know, as soon as you finish your multiple choice assessment, you're given a number and it's out of 35. So for example, if you're given the number 26, then that would mean that you have a B. The written paper is a pre-release case study and non-case study paper. You'll see the case study six weeks before the written exam. You'll be given access to the case study also within the exam and you'll have questions to answer on the case study section and the non-case study section. The paper must be completed within two hours, so do ensure you've answered all questions during that time. Part B in the written paper also will assess you on spelling, punctuation and grammar, SPAG, so that contributes up to five marks. So do ensure for your 15 marker SPAG, and it will show you within the actual question itself which one is a 15 marker SPAG, that your spelling, punctuation and grammar is very much where it needs to be. Within the case study section, you'll see a 50 marker SPAG and other case study questions. And for that section, it equates to 35 marks plus the five marks for SPAG. Then you've got the non-case study section. Now, within the non-case study section, you have a 50 marker. You didn't have that last year on the certificate. You only had a 50 marker SPAG in the case study section, but now in the non-case study section, you have a 50 marker. It's not SPAG though. So you have a 50 marker and five markers to answer in the non-case study section. So it's very important that you know and you've practiced how to answer 15 mark questions because now on your written paper, you have a 50 marker SPAG to answer and a 15 mark question too, in addition to other questions. So do practice prior to your written paper. Additional information in the written paper, do not forget this. So you won't see this prior to your exam, but on the day of the exam, you may be given additional information, which is new information, new data. Here's just a snippet for exemplar purposes. So you can have a look and refresh your memory on what this kind of additional information might look like. So don't ignore it. Do read it carefully and extract relevant information where needed. So now you've moved on from unit one, immediate and short term, reviewing the purpose of money, the personal life cycle and much more. Then unit two, which focus on medium and long term savings products. Your next unit is unit three, where you will cover all of these topics. Unit 3 will introduce you to reviewing financial resources and how individuals may become financially sustainable and how changes in circumstances and external factors may impact on them. You'll also look at things like borrowing and the cost of borrowing and how you might manage that and consider planning finances for the future. Here is an example of case study questions from a previous Unit 3 paper. Just a reminder to like, share and subscribe as I do post regularly.
and here's some previous e unit three non-case study questions. Describe, describe, evaluate. And then we move on to unit four, sustainability of the financial services system. And unit four would look at things like how providers work with each other, like marketing, social and ethical factors, the impact of the media on financial providers. And it's very much moving away from the previous units, unit one, two and three, which focus a lot more on individuals and their personal finance. And now it's focusing very much on the providers. Here is an example of case study questions from a previous paper. And here are some non-case study questions. Analyse, analyse and evaluate. It's very important to know the command words for the questions. Do ensure you come back over here before your January and May exams and check out the written predicted paper that will be created. I'll include a link in this video description box where you can access it. Tips for the written paper. Know the command words for the exam questions. So whether it's analyse, describe, evaluate, discuss, make sure you know these command words and know them well. You don't want to include advantages and disadvantages when you don't need to or not include advantages and disadvantages when you should. So know the command words because many students lose out on marks because they don't know the command words. Review the case study ahead of the exam in detail. Underline key information. Identify certain topics within the case study that you think might be relevant there. Plan and practice particular questions in regards to that. Just make sure you know the case study well. It will be in the exam, but make sure you're very familiar with it. Ensure you know how to answer the 15 marker SPAG questions and the 15 marker type of question that will appear in the non-case study section. Know how to answer questions. Do not ignore the additional information that might be given in the written exam as it might be pertinent to particular questions. The next two videos that you'll see on the screen are videos that YouTube thinks you should watch next. Thanks for watching.